Okay. So I am not going to waste Melissa's time with any team announcements or crap like that. We can get that in the team page. We're just going to dive right in. You guys know who Melissa is. She's a freaking rock star. She is my sister coach, another one of Micah's boss coaches. And what are you, six star right now? Three star qual in your second? Is that right? Yeah, three star official now. So that's so sweet. Awesome. So I'm just going to kick it over to you and soak it up. So you go. Okay. So, well, I mean, I like that it's kind of a smaller call. We can kind of keep it a little bit more intimate. And like, if you guys ever want to talk about anything that I'm sharing, just stop me and we can chat more about it. Um, but I kind of want to give you guys a little bit of history uh, before I go into really what I've been thinking about sharing tonight. And as you saw, Candace sent me that cute graphic she made. And tonight we're talking about like how to create consistency um, or sorry, com confidence in your journey. And immediately when we were talking about what she was hoping to share, what I could share with you guys, the first thought that came to my mind was consistency. And so um, I kind of want to take you back to even my first year of coaching. And you guys, I'll admit, like I was probably not like the sharpest tool in the toolbox. Okay. I came into the business, not even knowing it was a business, like not knowing I knew it was a business. I knew, I knew that I would get paid to do it, but I did not understand that I was opening up my own business. Okay. So if I can do it, like literally anyone can do it. Like I did not understand the whole concept of what a 1099 was. And like, I didn't know anything. But what I did know is that whatever, you know, what Micah told me, like I had to work hard, I had to stay consistent. And I, if I never gave up that I'd be successful. And they always told me that if I just continue to do the four vital behaviors, and if I continue to stay consistent, if I continue to do all these things every single day, that my income would double every year. And I was like, oh, I can do that. That makes sense to me. And my, you know, purpose for being a coach is to, you know, get home to my kids and to be a full-time mom and to quit my job, not because I hated my job, but just because I hated being away from my kids. And so when she told me that, and I think I actually heard that from Mindy Wender, um, I just said, okay, I'm all in and I'm going to go all in. And I had no idea what I was doing. Like I told you, like, I didn't even understand that I was opening my own business or my own company until like a month into the business. So it's just, it doesn't take like anyone super smart or super special or business or tech savvy or anything. Like anyone can do this business. So when I first started, I feel like, um, I had a lot of confidence that I would be successful. I think a lot of coaches do because you come into the business, you join a coach who is successful because you believe in them and you believe in what they're, they're doing. And then after, you know, maybe a month or two it, and it start, you realize like it's not as easy as you thought it was going to be. Like, I remember Micah just signing up challengers like it was nobody's business. And that wasn't the, like, that wasn't the case for me. I signed up like my dad and my, brother and my best friend the first month, you know, along with Jeff. And then the second month it was like, I was asking people, like I wanted to earn that free ticket. That was like a measurement of success for me. And so I made it happen no matter what. And then the 21 day fix happened and all of that stuff. But you guys, it wasn't like I was a Micah, like I wasn't a Micah. And I think most people aren't like that. And that's why I wanted to kind of share that story is because maybe some of you are on this call thinking, gosh, I've been like, I've been hitting success club and then not hitting it and then hitting it and then not hitting it. You guys, I haven't hit success club consistently until I was probably a year and a half or two years into the business. And that's not, I'm not saying that because I'm proud of it. I'm saying that because I want you to see that it's normal to struggle through the first year. I think it's normal to, 
you know, be up and down in your confidence through the beginning of your journey. And that's what it is. I still feel like I'm in my infancy of my company. And that's an exciting thing to think because there's just so much potential and so much possibility. Um, so now that you know kind of where I started, I want to talk about where I'm at now. So in my first year, you guys, I was barely hitting SC5. Um, a Shakeology challenge pack was worth like one SC point and, or sorry, a Shakeology subscription was worth one SC point and a challenge pack was worth two. And so like I would, that means I literally was like scraping by hitting success club and it was frustrating and hard. And I felt like really discouraged. And I remember when I was about one year into the business, I was talking to Jeff that Jeff is my husband. And I was like, I think, I think I'm just not cut out for this. I don't think I'm good at it. You know, I'm not hitting a C20 like my God. That's, it's crazy. I'm not consistently, you know, hitting these huge numbers. And at that point, I was a diamond coach. Um, I can't even remember what my income was, but I think I was making like a thousand dollars a month, something like that. So it was pretty like for me in my life, like that was really a big deal. And I had gotten so caught up in the numbers, in the ranks, in all of that, that I forgot why I became a coach and I kind of lost sight of my bigger purpose of what coaching meant to me. So if you're in that situation, if you are in a place where you're thinking, gosh, am I act, like, am I good at this or am I going to be successful or is this something that I can do? I just challenge you to stick with it. Even if you've been a coach for a year, even if you've been a coach for a year and a half, my business really didn't take off until almost two years into the business. And I remember, um, <laughs> like, I remember applying for this job. Um, I was really trying to earn more money for our family. And I remember applying for this job and it was a sales job. You guys, I'm horrible at sales, like horrible, but it was in the teaching. Um, I don't know what you call it, but it had to do with um, the teaching atmosphere. And I was like, Hey, I'm a teacher. They might want to hire me because I know what teachers want and need. And I told them in my interview, I said, yeah, I actually work. I sell fitness stuff and I'm a diamond coach. And they were like, Whoa, like, what is that? I'm like, yeah, it's a big deal. And I sold them on that title and what I was and how I was, you know, successful in this business. And all of a sudden I was like, why don't I act like that with everyone I'm talking about? Because if I don't start acting like that, maybe I'll never be that, you know, and you have to almost build that confidence and belief before you even are that. And so, um, that leads me to, you know, I think one of the things that really has propelled my business is 100% diving into a program. And a lot of you guys know, like I had the opportunity to be in the to be mindset test group. Well, it was kind of a different test group. And I'll admit, I was really disappointed when they asked me to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And I was disappointed because I had seen all of these people in test groups um, sharing their journey, talking all about these programs. And everyone is like asking them, like, I want to be on your list. I want to do this with you, blah, 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 blah. And in my mind, I was like, I'm going to miss out. Like, I'm not going to get that opportunity. I'm not going to have that success and it's not going to work in my benefit. And as I started to actually do the to be mindset program, and as I started to see my own confidence and my own mindset shift, I recognized how wrong I was thinking. And I'll tell you that for a long time, I kept wishing like, oh, I, I want to be in a test group. Like, I want that advantage over other coaches. I want to be able to have an incredible launch. And I know that feeling like how many of you guys have ever felt that before? Like it would be so beneficial if I could be in a test group. Okay. That was how I thought. And then when I had the opportunity and we couldn't say a word about it, I was like crushed. Well, then 
I met Alana and I started working on my own journey and I was all in you guys. It was all in. I was completely immersed myself in that program. And I started to see my mindset shift in the way that I thought about everything. And so um, I'm going to tell you guys a story and it's, it's like a real story. So it's not like I shouldn't have used the word story. I want to tell you about this experiment that was done before. And I, I promise you it ties into confidence and it ties into the to be mindset. Um, okay. So I have no idea the names of the people who have done this. You can probably Google it. I'm just going to tell you what I remember. My aunt was telling me about this book she was reading that talked about an experiment. And in the experiment, there was a man, and he's probably like a doctor or something, but I have no idea, so I'm not going to give him credentials that I don't know that he has. But this man, he really wanted to experiment with thoughts and emotions and energies, okay? So he got a bag of rice, and he boiled this rice, and then he put it in a jar. And he looks at this jar, and he starts to speak all sorts of negative things to this jar to the rice. And he's, he's saying, you're so ugly. You're not successful. You're never going to be a successful, whatever you're, you're, you're horrible. Like just all the negative energy, everything he could think that was negative. He said to this jar of cooked rice, once he had spoken to this rice for like 10 minutes, um, all the negative things that he could think, he took the jar and he put it in his cupboard. And then he left it there for two days. So two days pass and he goes to the cupboard and he looks at the rice and it is black and moldy and it's growing all sorts of things. Um, and it's just gross. It's completely disintegrating. Like it's, what did they call that word? It's like decomposing. Okay. So then he's like, okay, that was really interesting. Like I had spoken all this negative energy into this rice. So then he does the exact same thing. He gets a new bag of rice, he cooks the rice, and he puts it in a jar. And he then does the opposite. He starts to speak all kinds of positive and loving affirmations to this jar of rice. I know it sounds so weird, you guys, but I promise you this is real. So he's speaking to this jar of rice and he says, I love you. You're amazing. You were so successful. You're beautiful. Like just all the positive things he could think he does that exact same thing for the same amount of time. He takes this jar of rice and he puts it in the cupboard and he leaves it for two days. He goes back two days later and the rice looks perfect. It looks exactly as when he had cooked it and talked to it, um, two days before. So then he started to think, okay, that's really, really interesting because the rice that I spoke negatively to started to decompose. The rice that I spoke positively to started, you know, it was perfect. It looked great and it looked just as it should. So he then thought, well, what if I just thought these things without saying them out loud? What if I thought these things to the rice? So he did the experiment over again. You guys know this, like all of it. And the exact same result came without even saying them out loud. So I want you guys to think, now that you've heard this story, I want you to think about how you speak to yourself, okay? Do you constantly or are you sometimes thinking to yourself, gosh, I'm just not that great of a coach. I'm not as good of a coach as that coach. Or I'm not whatever. Insert any phrase that maybe is less than what you would tell anyone else. Or are you consistently speaking positive affirmations to yourself, telling yourself that you're an amazing coach, telling yourself and believing that you have so much to give. Okay. So, um, I don't know if all of that made sense. I've never like talked to anyone about that, but hopefully you guys can see this has kind of been my experience. So my aunt actually told me that story when I was in the mid, it was at Christmas. So it was like right in the middle of when I had started to be mindset. I, we started on the 17th. So I guess I had been doing it for about one month. And I started to think about how that applied so much to the to be mindset. Whenever we are in a fitness journey, it's hard. 
you guys know it's really hard. Like if you've ever had to lose a significant amount of weight, like it's not easy to lose weight. And sometimes when we wake up in the morning, we look in the morning, we think, gosh, can't there just be abs there? Like, why do I have to go do this every single day? Or it would be so much easier if I was like Micah and I could just never even look like I had weight to lose, right? Like those are things that I used to think. like, gosh, it would be so nice if I was one of those people that just looked amazing right after they had a baby or didn't gain 50 pounds every time they got pregnant. And instead I started to think, you know what? I am beautiful just the way I am. And I am on a journey that is going to make me stronger and better than I was before. And it's when you make that mindset shift in all areas of your life as a mother, as a wife, as a friend, as a fitness coach, as whatever, insert any title that you hold. If you're ever talking negatively to yourself, doesn't that just destroy your confidence? Okay. You guys probably are recognizing and seeing the shift even that the entire beach body community is making and i feel like we're all moving towards a much more confidence based belief belief system okay every coach is really working on instilling belief in their coaches and i remember telling Brittany, uh, my corporate mentor i remember telling her this last year last year i would i told her I want to just breathe belief into my coaches because they just don't believe in themselves. And that's really one of the things that I feel like I have been working on the most this year is just believing in the people that are around me, believing in my challengers. I used to really struggle to help my challengers get results, really struggle. And I think it was because I wasn't fully invested in the programs. I could never figure out the containers for myself. And that's why I'm so, so grateful for the 2B mindset because it's something that works for me. And now I can speak confidently to all different kinds of people, people who need containers, they need exact measurements, people who need freedom and need to be intuitive and they need to have that just a different mindset about nutrition and people who need numbers, they need macros, and they need different kinds of measurements for them to understand exactly what they need to put in their bodies. But you guys, the coolest thing is, is that we have all the tools, and we have everything that we need. It's just we have to build that belief and really stick to a program. So if you, here's um, something I want to challenge you to do. If you've never done a program completely, do one and call it a test group. Okay. So lift four is the perfect opportunity. And I know we're like a week late for that, but it's not too late. You can still like, for example, um, one of my goals is to always hit success club before the end of the first week of the month. Well, this month it was the 4th of July and I, it wasn't like I took time off, but I was really struggling to find all those people who were excited about starting a fitness journey or starting a program. And so on, I think it was Monday, what's today, Tuesday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. <laughs> I posted another group. I just said, I'm looking for 20 women and I want to work with 20 women who really want to completely transform their life. And I, you know, signed up five challengers from that. And I was really struggling, you know, in the past week and a half to, hit those goals that I had set for myself. And so, you know what you do? You just do it again and you 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 never stop trying and you keep that consistency from day one to day 1 million. And it's really, that's, what's going to build your confidence is knowing that doesn't matter where you are right now. All that matters is that you're never going to give up. Okay. And, you know, and just think about too, um, you have a lot to give. You have a lot to offer people, not only in all of the amazing programs and all of the amazing nutrition courses and everything that we have to offer as Beachbody coaches, but you as an individual 
have so much to offer people. You are someone who is going to change someone's life. Even if it's just one person, that is a huge deal. And I think we sometimes sell ourselves short and we think, well, we play that comparison game. Well, they're helping this many people or they're helping. It does not matter. You guys keep your eyes on your path and know exactly the type of coach you want to be and believe hundred percent in that person. And when you do that, you're going to attract those people who see your belief because they want to have that too. So um, just believe in yourself. And I really can't like say it any other way. Um, but if you went to Summit and I'm not even like, I'm just recognizing like that was the, the theme of Summit is believe in you. And I just can't stress that enough that it really starts with you. And it starts with what you're doing yourself in your own journey. And then you sharing that. And as you believe in what you're doing and you share that journey authentically, like really truly share the ups and the downs, but always make sure you're giving them the truth and you're sharing your truth, then you're going to help inspire people who are looking for that exact same result. But you have to be willing to put yourself out there, believe in what you have to offer, and know in your heart that you're going to inspire someone, um, whether you believe in like a higher being or not. I really think like if you're every morning when you wake up, like ask God or ask the universe or whoever you believe in to help you help guide you to someone who needs you today. Whether that is just to pick them up from a crummy day or to inspire them to begin something that they're really scared to do. And something, and I'll just give you guys, I'll leave you with this last little bit. And then if you have questions, we can talk about questions. Um, I think that one of the biggest objections besides money that I get is fear. A lot of people say, well, I'm afraid I'm, I'm afraid to start because I have never stuck with anything. And I just, I don't know if I'm going to stick with this too. And so this is what I tell people who had this objection today. And this is what I told her. Um, this girl that I've been talking to for, oh, she's been in my challenge groups for years and she's been wanting to be a coach for years, you guys. And she told me today, she said, I'm just afraid. And I said, in my experience, and this is something that I actually have talked with Cozy about, but in my experience, whenever I'm afraid to do something and then I do it, the result on the other side is always something really amazing, like really incredible. So think about experiences that you've been afraid of. Like for one, I remember one of the most scary things in my life that I've ever done was go on like a first date with my husband. It was scary because for one, he didn't want his family to know because they were trying to set us up and we were on a family vacation. So pretty sure they all knew. And so I was scared that they were all going to talk and say something about it. Isn't that what we're all afraid of is like people talking about us. We need to focus more on what we think and what we feel rather than what anyone else thinks or feels in regards to our own life. Right. Think about when you had your first baby. If you've had a baby, maybe you're, you haven't yet, but if you've ever had a baby, were you not scared shizzless? Like scary. Okay. It's scary. And you have no idea what you're doing and nothing in the world can prepare you for that. And they give you this kid and you're like, like I'm in, I'm in charge of this kid. Okay. I have no idea what I'm doing. And let's just pray we can make it home from the hospital and not kill it. Right. Like, it's just scary. And then they grow up and they're, you're changing diapers and you're laughing and they're smiling and they're walking. And it's like the best, most fulfilling, amazing reward in the entire world. But it's scary at first. Everything that you're starting is going to be a little bit scary. But if you can help people see that on the other side of that fear, there's going to be something incredible and incredible magical, amazing transformation or whatever it might be. But on the other side of whatever is 
scary to them, there's going to be something really amazing. And if they don't do that thing they're scared of, they're going to miss out. So, okay, that's, I don't know, that's really what I had to share. So not going to ending or beginning or anything. So that's, that's it. <laughs> all right. That's all right. We got this. Do you guys have any questions? Anybody want to unmute? Susan, are you unmuting? No, you're just playing with something. She's working on Relief Society stuff. I know. She's amazing. Just I kidding. Just back from helping a widow that just had half of her toe cut off. So. Oh, my oh gosh. No. See, she just blows us all out of the water. No, you're amazing. I just, I just, I needed to Always doing it. something. Well, I'm glad you're serving someone right now. That's amazing. Okay. I hope you guys took notes. Ashley, did you just send me? Yeah. Go. So were you trying to build this business while you were working as a teacher? Still? Yeah. So I worked for two and a half years, the first two and a half years that I was a coach. And you went all in then? Yep. Yeah, I worked in like every little crack of my life, like even when I was going pee. Where were you toilet. at when you decided to just be done with teaching? Like, where were you at in the business? Well, my experience is a little bit different than that. So I taught for about a year and a half <clears throat> while I was coaching. And then I applied and got a different job in, in, in a education technology company. So I worked there for a year. And when I, so this is the funny thing, because I just basically talked to you guys about fear. And like, I was really afraid to quit my job. And I'll just be honest with you. I was afraid because we had insurance through my job. And we could get insurance through Jeff's, but they had told us it wasn't as good. So that was something I was afraid of. And I was afraid of um, inconsistency or whatever you want to call it. And I didn't realize that my fear was holding me back. So at about a year um, into working at this education technology company, I finally decided like I was sick of someone else controlling my schedule. And the money was great. It was awesome. And it was way more than I made as a teacher, but I knew we wanted to have more kids. And so I just decided and Jeff and I decided that we were going to make it work no matter what. How many kids? And before? so I had two. Okay. I had two kids while I was working full time as the head volleyball coach and two kids under two. So like literally every crack, whenever I was nursing, I was working and some people might be like, well, that sucks, but you guys now I have ultimate freedom. Like I can work when I want to work. So the sacrifice for me in the beginning, even though it was hard and it, it was not only hard for me, but it was hard on my family too. Like Jeff was probably really frustrated with me when I was up until midnight listening to calls I'd missed all day long. and catching up on my power hour and making sure I'd completely caught up with all of my conversations because I knew the next day was just going to be just as crazy, but it was worth it. Now looking back, like it was way worth all the hard work and all the hours that I didn't sleep and all of that, because now like I get to decide all of that for myself. I actually just wrote down a quote today. I'm listening to the entrepreneur roller coaster by Darren Hardy. And he talked about having passion for what you're doing. And he said, you might not love what you do. It sucks. The day-to-day -day stuff kind of sucks. You have to love why you do it. Yeah. And I think that's I really important for us as coaches because, I mean, our power hour is not fun. It's just, Mike always says it's the unsexy stuff. It's not exciting. It's a drag some days, but we love the why, what we're going for, the vision, the goal, and just like you said, that ultimate freedom. I'm writing that down. That one, I was naughty and driving and had to do talk to text. Write that one down today. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so okay. Susan, when I, was, when I quit, I was a three star, I think, maybe a two star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 
I hit five star though, like the next year after I quit. And this year is my second year not working and just hit three star in my second and we're almost seven star qual. We should be, but you know, it's all crazy. Yeah, just minor details. Anybody else have questions? So I loved one thing that you said um, in the very beginning, and I hope everyone noticed this. Um, you talked about the struggle in the beginning, and honestly, probably the struggle now. There's always struggle. But you talked about in the beginning of your business, the struggle and how you had to realize that the struggle was exciting, because that means you have so much more potential. Like you said, your business now, you still feel like it's in, in its infancy, and that could be overwhelming. Or it could just be exciting because there's just so many more things ahead, so much more potential. And I think that's important for all of us to realize because we all struggle. Micah struggles. Everyone struggles in this business in some way. And I think it's important to recognize that that just means you're growing and there are bigger and better things ahead. I love that. Yeah, so true. Who else? Yeah, I mean, even now, I feel like everyone still struggles. And even like top coaches in the business oh, yeah. struggle you know, so. Oh yeah. And it's easy for us, you know, at the lower levels to hear that and roll our eyes and be like, no, I want to struggle with that much money. I and know. Fine, but we probably have no concept of how difficult it is to run an organization that big or to manage that much money, you know? So yeah. Well, and also you have to compare, like I, whenever I think like, oh, this is like, I'm so frustrated right now. I have to take myself back to my frustrations before yeah because they were way worse like dropping my kids off and watching them like scream and cry and basically feeling like a failure as a mother that sucked way more than any like missed rank or like dropping you know income or whatever like that stuff can be made up later but time with my family was something I couldn't sacrifice anymore yeah absolutely I love that all right, guys. Anything else? Sorry, I have a quick question. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, go yeah. for it. Sorry, I'm I'm off video because I'm I am nursing a baby. You're all right. <laughs> anyway, um, Melissa, I wanted to ask you, or even Candace, or anyone who wants to answer something. I've been thinking about a lot lately. Is I've been wondering. Um, so I guess I'll ask you guys the question first: Is where do you guys see yourself, like? in five to 10 years, I keep like thinking, am I going to do this forever? And I think that's actually holding me back thinking that maybe I won't be like, I don't know, like it's the long-term goal, like view that I'm having a hard time with. Cause I don't really know any coaches who've done this longer than five years, which that's great. But I wonder where this goes as you get older, you know? And anyway, yeah, that's what I wonder, want to know. For me, I'm, I'm literally going to be like in a wheelchair. Like, I just think it's so fun. Like, I think it's fun. I think it's rewarding. And I feel like I could do it forever. Like, there's never, and that might be a struggle for my husband, but like, that's going to be something that will work out when it gets there. But I just think it's so rewarding and exciting. And I love helping people. Like, that's why I became a teacher. And I feel like I get to use the, the skills and things that I learned in teaching as a coach without having to be away from my kids. Well, and for so, me, I don't know. I'm in a struggle and I'm, you know, kind of complaining to Brett and I'm going, man, I can't do this. What am I doing? Why am I still here? And every time he says, well, you want to quit? That's fine. If you want to quit, you can quit. Do you want to quit? Or are you going to keep going? And if I think about that, I think, no, 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 no. I don't want to quit. You know, don't, don't say that. No. And then I realize I can't imagine my life without it. Yeah. Even if I never go beyond this level, even if this is the max my income ever reaches, even if it's a struggle every month, whatever, I love it. I love what it does in my life. So I can't see myself ever stopping. Okay. Thank you. That answers my question perfectly. I guess like I just was wondering what people thought of it as like, if this is something I could do for the rest of my life. Like, totally. Like, you know, and we don't have that example because coaching is new. It's what, eight years mm -hmm. old? nine years since they started yeah. the network. So we don't have anyone in wheelchairs yet, but we will. I mean, yeah. was it, it was either Christina Delgado or it was um, Danielle Natoni. One of the two of them at Summit on stage said, we're going to be up here in our wheelchairs. 
you know, we're going to do this forever. I think it was a leadership meeting, you know, so they're all of the same mind too. Nobody's going anywhere. Nobody who's really invested in what they're doing. That's awesome. Thanks. It says you have less than a minute, just so you know. Yeah. Erin, you're welcome to unmute and give it a go in the last minute. No. Susan, whatever. <laughs> She's going to be running circles around all of us. Seriously. All right, you guys, we're out of time. Melissa, thank you so much. Amazing. I recorded it. I will get the link out to everybody and to those who missed it. And we're just so grateful to you for taking the time out to be here and to share your experience with us. And let's run together, you guys. We can all do this. Hey, have a good night.